el Aquagan. The song I'm going to share is a Lekwungen celebration song. When our Songhees community opened up its wellness center, I was approached and asked to compose a song to acknowledge the many hands that um, helped raise that house to where it is today. So when my name is Joan Elizabeth Morris, the name I prefer is Salama, given to me by my grandma over at Chatham Island, which we now call Chase. It's great job. My name is Cheryl Bryce. I'm a member of the Songhees Nation. I also work for my nation as the director of local services, which includes uh, being the lands manager. And my nickname is Skip. And the name that the family gave me was Lachichach, and um, it, it connects me to my family and then to my land. But the beautiful thing about that is that I have a name that I can go anywhere in the world and I know I belong somewhere. I was quite sure. As a watchdog, Chile is an Lekwungen, and my First Nation name is um, Lekwelepten, and the name comes from my great-grandfather in Saanich, and I'm um, Skipper's younger brother. For my ancestors, um, both uh, Songhees and Esquimalt Nations, at one time we were one community um, that spanned from um, Royal Roads over to um, Cordova Bay into, um, into the Saanich area and all the way down to the south into what we refer to as HS Discovery Island as well as the southwestern side of the San Juan Island. We're traditionally made of seven major family groups and within those families there's a multiple families and they live in a larger area. From my understanding, this beautiful space that we're in occupied over 14 different villages. The breakdowns are, were because of the, the foods and um, the locations that we, we had all around the Victoria area. And those were the Kwangan people. So where we are today in Megan, or the colonized name is Beacon Hill. Um, it's part of the Swing Wong family group, uh, out towards um, Oak Bay and Saanich and down into the San Juan Islands that was known as the uh, Jaconan family group. And that's where my family group is from, but I connect to all the other family groups. We're just families that respect each other's territories. I was born and raised on Chatham Island, Jess, for the first 10 years of my life. Such a heaven on earth, still home, still home to me. 
always will be. From my understanding as place to smoke herring people, um, Lakwangan, that was our original name for this area. And Songhees and Isquimalt became acquired names through contact and through negotiation. The meaning, as it's been taught to me, is um, our word Lakwang, which means um, smoked herring. And then Lakwangan means place to smoke herring. And then Lakwanganathan refers to the language of this land. An elder once said that you have to speak the language of the land. The language brings forward light and understanding around um, our lands and water resources in a different way that um, provides a cultural scope and perspective that isn't tangible using the English language. But tangible in a cultural perspective that reaches into our spirit and heart as individuals. Real good heart and mind. The the goodness of your heart. and you're rich so long as you have the, the tamok, the land. Because you look after tamok, it'll look after you. At one time along the Gorge Waterway, there used to be two abundant herring runs. And so with those two abundant herring runs, that became one of our primary sources of economy as Lekwungen people. And um, not only was a food economy for ourselves, but it was also a trade economy for neighboring nations as well. So that became, I guess, the Kwangan box of treasures, along with Camas and Coho. Welcome to Migam. Its traditional name means roughly translated into a place to warm your belly. It's also one of the places that Kwetlal, Camas, was harvested and still is harvested. This is one of the locations that I will harvest and uh, manage these food systems by removing invasive plant species and reinstating indigenous plants. Traditionally, it was a, a very um, highly sought after food resource up and down the coast. The Lekwungen women were known as the people to go to to trade for camas. There was a particular woman that um, had that role and responsibility within certain families and they managed these food systems in all different kinds of locations in what's now known as Victoria. Um, so that's why I've referred to these as really a living artifact to our ancestors. If they didn't manage it the way they did, it wouldn't be here. 95% of the Kwetlau food system is completely gone compared to what was here 200 years ago. So there's very little left, so it's very, very precious when you have the opportunity to harvest the Kwetlau and connect with the Kwetlau and, and the whole food system. Tamuk is so sacred, it's such a blessing from our Creator. Camas, once it's uh, harvested, this is the bulbs I harvest, and um, when I'm ready to cook, I do it the old way. The pit cook, it tasted so good very slow cook. The camas over here has been cooking for 24 hours. There's a lot of other foods that I cook with the camas. Of course the chocolate lily. There's very very few of them left so I don't cook too much of those. You don't see much camas but you don't see very many chocolate lilies. 
the language is attached to the teachings, the teachings are attached to the land. Everything about our Lekwungen lands is sacred. In terms of understanding, in terms of relationship to land, and my hope is for our next generations is to be open, to be curious, and to embrace the, you know, the old teachings of our lands and the disciplines behind that. To be brought up by the Salelok from all over. They were so full of love and compassion. They were willing to teach. They put a blanket and a pillow on the floor for my uncle and I, and we'd listen to the swim, the stories. The teachings were so strong. They watched you from the time you were born. They knew if you were gonna be a chief, a speaker for the big house, a healer. They always picked somebody to come alongside to the coach you so you weren't lost. How we've paid attention to our ancestors, how we've paid attention to our elders, how we've listened to the land and water resources around us. That's the discipline that I hope our next generations understand. The most important thing you can do is learn everything you can about the Lekwungen people because this is your land. It's to educate people about the truth of our history, talk about colonialism historically, but colonialism today, and those impacts to land and culture and health and community, and to our relations, whether you're Indigenous or non-Indigenous. The opportunity to educate is so very important. Some people are never going to see what I'm trying to tell them as far as the truth of the history and why things are so important to who I am as Lekwungen and to our Lekwungen future and to the health of our people. You know, just developing those relationships and it takes time. Um, and, um, and I think that's one of the things that Indigenous and non-Indigenous people do to uh, build, start building that relationship is on the ground. I think it's an important part of learning and hands-on learning. So people will walk these landscapes and be able to say, okay, yeah, I can see how this is important to the Lokwangan people today. And to even acknowledge that we live today. We're still here, we're still alive. And our culture is still thriving. Our purpose in this whole universe is to make sure that we're looking after the folks they're not born yet, the young people. So our purpose is pretty meaningful. It's very important to um, protect these areas and manage these areas for future generations. And that's one of the things I do as part of my traditional role. As I said, I really want to encourage our youth to get back to the tunnel, get back to the land, get back to the sea. teaching that, um, you know, we're temporary, temporary stewards of this land and we're borrowing it from our next generations. And so that's what I, you know, I think is my honor that I give to it is the honor of my ancestors, elders who looked after it and passed on that knowledge to us. We can't live as different people. We gotta live as who we are. The message is there. Oh,